Watch the entire video my lovely viewers, I mean from start to finish, to get the whole thing. Without wasting much of your time, let's get right into it. Hi lovely viewers, it's me again, your one and only Mtati Mpundu. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If this is your first time on my channel, kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel by hitting the red subscribe button down below and turn the bell icon to join the notification squad. Don't forget to like, share and leave a comment. Tell me what you think about this video in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you lovely viewers. The first issue I want to deal with is that of national unity. National unity. We have a heritage as a people, as a country, a heritage which incorporates many of us who may look different in height, does it matter? No. In complexion, does it matter? No, it doesn't. Many of us may twist our tongues when we speak differently. Languages, does it matter? Absolutely not because that's a gift from God. We always just find ourselves in there. I want to see a child who chooses parentage. Before they are conceived, they say, me, I want my parents to be Mr. X as my father and Madam Y as my mother. They are not conceived. Is that possible? No. So who our parents are, who or where they live is not our choice. I must also be specific. How they go to know each other, we never know because we are not there. But we are a product of love. We are a product of love, not hatred. We are made in the image of God and no one else. It's very important. Fellow citizens, I don't comment when things happen anyhow. I have quite some patience and quite some tolerance. Levels of patience and tolerance are quite high, especially a guy like me who went through a lot to stand here as a head of state. I probably went through the worst discrimination any citizen can receive from his own or her own citizens. I went through the worst. Records are there. When you experience what I've experienced, you learn to be patient. You learn to be tolerant. You also sometimes learn to ignore certain things until when it's right to speak or to say something or respond in a certain way. And I believe over years now, over months, and days, putting all the things that have been going on together around this attack, insistent attack on national unity, on our heritage, on our unity and diversity, something we inherited from those that came before us. Some are gone. KK and his group are gone. 
Some are still alive, very small number, freedom fighters. We have an obligation to address this issue squarely and not to skate around. Driven on the platform or the understanding that no one, and really no one, should be allowed to divide this country. It's a heritage we are proud of. 72, 73 ethnic groups, some will argue, to argue that you know, there are 70, no, some are close, uh, there are 30, it doesn't, doesn't matter. The message is that it's a heritage. When this country was put together as a republic, others came from my, the north, migrated from the north. Others migrated from the south. Others from the east, west. Others moved longer distances over many years. Others short. At the time the country was pronounced as independent Zambia, it did not matter how long you traveled to sit in this geography, 752,000 square kilometers of land, eight plus one neighbors. It doesn't matter what agreements existed with the BSA company, Cecil Rhodes, with the Crown of England, with anyone else. It did not matter. A pronouncement was made that this board of citizens, this board of people, from now on, going forward, will be called citizens of Zambia. Full stop. And the Constitution is very clear that there's no one citizen who is superior to the other. I repeat, there's no one citizen, not even a group, that is superior to others. Where's the reference point? The Constitution. It is there. In my difficult days, when others made it clear that I was not allowed to be president of Zambia, and that they will use everything at their disposal, all the force they had at their disposal, including the military at the time, my answer was dual. Two, one, I would say to those, go and change the constitution. You don't want this fellow, fellow citizen to be head of state? Go and change the constitution. It's the only justification that will allow you to talk that language, that divisive language. Two, you are not caught. Therefore, you cannot say those things. And I maintain that posture. The rest is history. What has been happening in our country over years, over months, over days, is not acceptable. Divisive talk, adults meet, organized to meet, to spew hatred against fellow citizens, to sow seeds of divisions against fellow citizens. Indeed, that is weird. In a Christian country, Inside the church? Really? The sacred house of God? You are spewing hatred? You are proud to say that you are a violent man? You are a violent man inside the church? There's a contradiction in a Christian nation. And others are clapping. Honestly, we should say no to such things. To say 
these must stay there, those must stay there. What God put together, no one puts asunder. Honestly speaking, adults, grown-ups, incredible. As your chief servant, I'm here to say that behavior, that language proudly says, me, I can hurt people, I'm violent. That's disgusting. To say the least, that's disgusting. From whichever angle you want to look at it, that's disgusting. And it should have no place in our society, in our country. And none of us should clap for such behaviors. None of us. We shouldn't teach children, our children, hatred. We should teach our children love and accommodation. So we should teach our children. If you are a responsible parent, you teach your children love, tolerance, diversity, unity and diversity. Honestly speaking, and I urge the people's army, we should not clap for such. We should not encourage lunacy. That's lunacy. If our forefathers behaved like that, would have never had independence. Some of you are young. Political parties, we were a multi-party state at independence. Not a one-party state. First election, there was no absolute winner to form government. Three parties emerged. European party, two liberation parties, UNIP and ANC. Two out of these three needed to come together to form government, despite their differences in policies. UNIP under KK, ANC under Kumbula, one was socialist orientated, one was market best in national interest. They came together. That's great. That's how it should be. Sixty years later, others are pulling away. Now, we shouldn't teach our children bad manners at dinner tables, divisive and angry hearts. Cabinet met yesterday to arrest this issue and do it decisively. Cabinet met yesterday and resolved to amend all laws which flow out of the Constitution, amend all those laws that have to do with discrimination of this nature, as we have experienced in an ugly way, and bring about amendments that will stiffen penalties and make it unattractive for anyone, anyone, to spew hatred against fellow citizens. I must actually say against humanity. Reflect on Rwanda, genocide. Started like this, just like this. Kids thought it was normal to say, find a Tusi, kill them. You are who to find a Tusi, kill them. It became normal. The churches got involved. The churches, the board of Christ got involved in spewing hatred and funding weapons of murder. Go to Rwanda and look at the museum there. I'm happy to sponsor all those that met 
to spew hatred which could lead to civil strife, not from government resources but from my own farming resources, to send them to Rwanda for a study tour to understand that there's no price you can attribute on such behavior. So to forestall that once and for all, the laws yesterday cabinet passed a cabinet memo to allow the amendment of the laws so that anyone who does that goes in for a long time, for a very long time. So it will be unattractive. Parliament opens, that law will be tabled and it will be enacted. So we call on Parliament, I recognize members of Parliament that are also seated here. I should have acknowledged you. Parliament is expected to do what is right, to pass that law or those laws. That's my message, fellow citizens. It's my duty, it's our duty to do what is right. For me, I thought colleagues would change. After a while, they've refused to change. So you have only one way. When you cannot negotiate, you have to use the law to moderate people who are excessive. So, You have had head speech against fellow citizens. Then you choose to go inside there. You are lucky that there will be mattresses for you. This government has brought mattresses and beds, but it's not the same. Next, rule of law rule of law. Rule of law. And as I touch on the rule of law, just to reinforce other measures that the school curricula, we also agreed yesterday in the cabinet, I beg your pardon, that the school curricula will now take into account the importance of teaching children from an early age national unit. Our values as a country, as a nation. And that the country comes first. We take care of the country's needs, our needs will be taken care of. Not the other way around. School curricula. Cabinet resolved yesterday that subjects or topics will be orchestrated around there. At least we can save the younger generation. Some of the older ones are gone, they're finished. They're polluted, their heads are polluted. But the only way to deal with them is prosecution and jail. That's it. But for the young ones who we care for most, we can breed a group of citizens that love each other that support each other. After all, you are married to each other. Me, I don't know where, why people would pretend when they're in politics away from the bedroom. You marry people from anywhere. On the copper boat in church, I gave an example that here on the copper boat, then I was on the copper boat. You have a husband, member, married to a Tonga woman, and they produce three children. Follow this example carefully. Not four, three. Now, who is of the three children, who is Bemba? Who is Tonga? Of the three children. Who is neither of the two? So one is Bemba, one is Tonga, another one, you have to cut them in the middle, to be fair, to share. Really, as you sit here, ask yourself a question. Is that how we should live? 
Engoni Maris Nina Mwanga Elambia Many of you don't know that we have a Lambia group in this country because we are too proud to respect others. That's a weakness. A Lambia marries a lousy woman. Who do you call those children? Let me give you my own example. Most of you are not aware. My wife is Sala, Soli, Lenje, and Lamba. Four. Soli, Sala, Lenje, Lamba. Me, I'm Ila Tonga. So that's six. So what are my three children now? What do we call them? Honestly, this is disgraceful. Other measures will be taken into account to reinforce this issue. This is DJ Mutati exclusive. All right, that's all right for you today, lovely viewers. If you did enjoy the video, please don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section below. Tell me what you think about the video you just watched in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you, lovely viewers. Once again, I go by the name of Mutatim Pondum. I love you. Peace. I gotta go.